Well, we've had two of the quarterfinals already. It's time for quarterfinal. And number three, who else is going to make it into the semifinals here in Paris? Let's go down for the athlete introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, shooting on target number one, representing Finland, Antti Wikström. And his opponent, on target number two, representing Hungary, Matthias Laszlo Balog. The line judge for this matchup is Christina Tiflidou. Quarterfinal, quarterfinal number three, Antti Wikström of Finland is 28 years old and the world at number 88. Matthias Balog of Hungary is just 21 and he's the world number 280. So congratulations to the pair of them for securing the quota places for their countries. Now it's all about trying to get some more world ranking points and prove that they are the right athlete to go to the Olympic Ten, Games. Good grouping for the Hungarian, but Wikström can put this out of reach with a 10. Ten. That's just that. A 29 is a great start for the Finnish archer, and he'll get the first two set points. Well, look there, looked like he tried to make a little adjustment, just went a little bit too far over to the left, but promising start despite only scoring 27. Yeah, he's just really unlucky, wasn't he? You know, two high, slightly right arrows just outside the 10, both touching each other, so great consistency. He made the adjustment, just went a little bit too far the other side, so he probably knows what he needs to do now just to get those into the middle, and we've got a match on our hands. Certainly could do. It's looking very promising, but the early lead to Wikström. And the key thing about these archers is that they won't go to Tokyo as a team. These are just for the countries that haven't qualified as teams for the Olympic Games. So they'll be shooting solo. Wikström with the lead means Matthias Balog of Hungary will shoot first in the second set. Ten, Corrections made and the Hungarians in the middle of the target. Nicky, we've seen so often just one arrow can make such a big difference. Yeah, at this level, you know, these guys are hitting the 10 regularly, so anything in the in the red really is a, a big opening. Nine. Mm. Both drifting over to the right. Eight. 
And that, that puts this one out of reach, and Balog has struck straight back and will draw level at two set points each. Interesting to see where this third arrow goes for Vikstrom. Again, he's made the adjustment and it's gone a little bit too far for a 24. I mean, the grouping of the first two arrows was very, very good. So, and, and, and the wind is consistent. Uh, so, a bit of an aiming issue. Yeah, possibly. What's unique about this venue right now is behind those targets, we've got those feather flags, and I think they're quite sensitive to the wind. You know, they move quite freely. And as a recurve archer, you've got that in your peripheral vision. You can see around the target, so they're going to be seeing that movement at full draw. And I just wonder whether that's affecting their aiming points. That I could see them blowing left, and maybe they're aiming a bit too far right because they think, you know, look at that flag blowing left, but actually they're over aiming off potentially. So, you know, it is an unusual setup. We usually have like a solid wall behind the targets in the finals field so yeah maybe they're just not used to having so much information yeah interesting trying to do a little bit of uh, redirecting there longer hold for the, the hungarian that's for sure makes some final adjustments we're all square after two sets and vikstrom will get us underway for set number three Immediate improvement from Vikstrom from the second set. No, no. And again, we're in a situation where Vikstrom can put this one out of reach. And nine is enough. Ten. Puts it in the 10 for a 29, his second 29 of the match. So 26 for Balog, and a real improvement from Vikstrom after the three eights in the, the second set. In, in fact, you look at his scoring now, and the, the second set is a bit of an anomaly, really. Yeah, 29, 24, 29. Bit of a strange one, wasn't it? But he just kind of circled around it, and we talked about, you know, perhaps it was the wind that was just giving him a bit too much information, not quite knowing where to aim, but brought his consistency back there. He certainly did. And, and one of the other things that you talked about is the, the, the swirling nature of the wind inside this circular stadium. Uh, and so perhaps it's, it's very different on the shooting line compared to how it is on the edge, what is the edge of the stadium where the targets are. Yeah, sometimes you can feel on your body the wind in one direction and the flags are doing the opposite thing and that's one of the worst things as an archer. You just want the consistency so you know where to aim. Vikstrom has wrestled the lead back can do this in this fourth set Balog will shoot first and his job is to score high to put some pressure on his opponent So a couple of big arrows coming up now, both on 19. 
Alloc could do with a 10 here. Very long hold. Oh, he's just clipped the 10, and that keeps this match alive. A 29 for Balog. Or oh, matched by Anti Vikstrom. Another 29 for him, his third in the match. And that means they will share the points at 5 3. Balog's kept his hopes alive in this competition. I think we've just seen way more nerves from Balog, aren't we? We can see some trembling, some tension, obviously relaxed it now behind the line, but you can just see how much this means. You know, this is a world ranking event as well. There's a lot on the line here. These archers want to get as much experience and good confidence from this tournament ahead of the games if they are selected by their federations. So, yeah, it's an important event for them. It really is. And on that note, uh, how likely is it that we are going to see, uh, well, we, we know it was only going to be one of the two Ukrainians we saw earlier on, but everybody else, do we expect them to be at the Games? That's more usual because we're only, I think, 32 days away from the Games now. Federations usually allow those archers who've won the places to go. There's usually not enough time left to do another selection. Well, at 5-3 down... Matthias Balog of Hungary is shooting to stay in this competition. Nine. No. 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 Critical that Balog outscores Vikstrom in this one. He can't afford a tie again. That's what he so desired, that 10. Matched though by Vikstrom. Pressure back on Balog. Needs to get a 10 really here. Taking his time to calm himself. We seem to be waiting an age for that clicker to go. A 27 leaves the door open for Vikstrom. An 8 is enough to get the single point he requires. And it looks like it is an 8. It's on the line, but an 8 is enough. If that gets marked up, it will have a difference to the final score. But we do know that Antti Vikstrom of Finland is through to the semi-finals here. We will wait for that measure probably on that last arrow. Did you get a feel for it? It looked like an eight to me. It was really close, yeah. I think we'll have to wait for the call. Probably an eight, but let's see. Well, if it is an eight, Vikstrom will win 6-4. Gets marked up, it will be a 7 3 victory. Well, confirmation of the win. Well, we haven't quite had confirmation of the score, but it is a win for Anti Vikstrom. He's through to the semi-finals here in Paris. Matthias Bellog a little bit tense through that one, as we've seen in the two previous quarterfinals. He will go away from the competition and celebrate the fact that he has qualified a quota place for Hungary. And we believe that he will be the Hungarian who will compete in Tokyo.
l'archer pratiquant tir à l'arc amoureux de notre discipline.